Um, let me turn next because here as well, in thinking uh, about the Cold War after it ended, it, by the early 1990s, there were already U.S. officials um, who were talking about uh, the Cold War as somehow a period of stability, of relative certainty about who the enemies were, about um, a time even in which uh, the United States could be relatively secure about its place in the world. All of those are just uh, are so divorced from reality that I want to go through fairly systematically to look at those, to debunk each of those myths about the Cold War. The Cold War, in fact, was a time in which there was constant debate about the U.S. place in the way, constant debate in Western countries. It, it, these sorts of debates didn't occur in communist countries because communist countries were ruled differently. But in Western countries, both the United States, Canada, and Western, in, uh, Western Europe, there were constantly debates about who precisely the enemy was. This arose in the United States most acutely during the Vietnam War, but also about uh, the whole nature of what foreign policy should be. Should it in include military intervention abroad? So let me um, go through each of these. The notion that the Cold War was a time of stability, for example, which was put forth by the then head of the director of the CIA, Jim Wolsey, in 1993. He testified before Congress looking back at the period that had just ended at that point, the Cold War, and he said, during the Cold War, we uh, achieved a degree of stability that we can't enjoy now. The post-Cold War world will be more dangerous than uh, the Cold War was. Well, again, it, it just reflects how little people think about what they're saying before they testify before Congress. Um, the Cold War, in fact, I'm not going to go through each of these but I just want to give you some sense. The Cold War was marked by numerous crises, some of which did erupt into warfare, others of which easily could have. These were crises both pitting the United States against the Soviet Union, but also sometimes internally the crises in Eastern Europe that did involve actual use mostly of Soviet troops although the uh, crisis in Czechoslovakia involved troops from five Warsaw Pact countries, including Bulgaria. The, um, the, by far the most dangerous of these crises was this one, which occurred uh, now 51 and a half years ago, October of 1962. In Cuba at that point, when the Soviet Union had secretly deployed medium and, and uh, intermediate range ballistic missiles, nuclear armed missiles, uh, the two sides nearly came to war over that, which would have involved, would have begun with a U.S. invasion of Cuba, subsequent uh, Soviet probably nuclear retaliation, and then escalation to all out nuclear war. If such a war had taken place, and I would, um, the documents that have emerged since the end of the Cold War have underscored just how dangerous that crisis was, how many accidents and unauthorized actions occurred during it that potentially could have triggered war. It was a time of great tension on the two sides, highly compressed time for decision making, uh, decision makers off operating with very little sleep and the like. It's a time when things can easily go wrong. So I would estimate, you know, it was barely uh, uh, with a 10% uh, likelihood that nuclear war could have been avoided, but somehow, uh, fortunately, it was because if such a war had happened, hundreds of millions of people would have died. The, um, in addition to the crises, that erupted. Uh, there were also some horrendously destructive wars that occurred during the Cold War. Again, the notion that it was a time of stability and peace um, is just, again, divorced from the reality of what was occurring. There, uh, the cumulative, uh, cumulative number of deaths 
from these wars, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Middle East Wars, the civil wars in Africa and Central America, the Soviet-Afghan War, was about 22 million people killed. Um, it is not as many, certainly, as died in World War II. That was uh, almost double the number. But, the, um, but still, the notion that the Cold War was a time of a long peace, I think, depends on where you live. If you live in Washington or if you live in, uh, in New York or somewhere, it was a time of a long peace. If you live in Vietnam or Korea or Afghanistan, um, I think you would think about the Cold War differently. Now, it's not to say that the Cold War was the only thing that caused these wars. In some cases, it was. Cl clearly, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, were direct results of the Cold War. The Middle Eastern Wars might have occurred after, but they were rendered far deadlier, far more bloody than they were because the competing sides provided arms to the two sides. Um, in addition, other ca clear costs of the Cold War were the dictatorships that existed, especially in the Soviet bloc, but there were also the United States, uh, because of the pressures of the Cold War, often supported authoritarian regimes, especially in Latin America and East Asia. That, again, was a direct result of the Cold War. There were U.S. officials who at times felt very uncomfortable about doing that, but because they were worried that the countries would otherwise fall to communism, um, they did support authoritarian regimes, sometimes quite brutal ones. Um, then finally, one other aspect, which you might not be able to see at the bottom, during the Cold War, in addition to these crises, there was always the prospect that a large-scale nuclear war could occur. It's very clear, I think, from the documents that have emerged since the end of communism that policymakers on both sides, both East and West, were extremely concerned about avoiding a large-scale nuclear Cold War. But the very dynamic of the Cold War was such that it was always a possibility. Now, if such a war had happened, it would have been a catastrophe well beyond World War II. It, it would have resulted in the deaths of hundreds of millions of people, plus such uh, enormous destruction that even those who survived would have been left with um, catastrophic conditions to try to recover from. So that was, uh, that prospect has largely no longer exists. Um, there, it, there are still nuclear weapons in the world. There's still a danger of a nuclear conflict, say, between India and Pakistan, um, possibly between China and India. But, um, but those are much more, with, with the possible exception of India and Pakistan, much more remote circumstances. And in any event, a war between India and Pakistan, even though it would be terrible for much of the world, wouldn't result in the same scale of destruction. 